State Department officials feel that the U.S. government's response to the protests may undermine the State Department's missions overseas. Also, China has criticized the U.S.'s double standards. Countries from all around the world have criticized President Trump's response. And General James Mattis lays into Trump's rhetoric towards these protests. We'll be catching up on all of this today on the Tonic Accord podcast. Hey, everybody. I'm Alex Kapitko, and welcome back to another Catching Up segment on the Tonic Accord. I hope that in the wake of everything that's going on, people are staying safe and smart, but also at the same time are exercising their right to speak out and act out against some serious problems that are going on right now. As Drew said last Sunday, we are holding off an in-depth discussion on the protests for the moment, because soon we are bringing someone on who can help bring better light to many of these issues and can also add a proper perspective to it. However, I do want to talk about some of the rather negative implications and I guess you could say alarming leadership decisions and rhetoric that are taking place from the top officials in the federal government. Over the last few days, it's been reported over numerous media outlets that current and former diplomats have expressed concerns that the crackdowns and government response to the protest may undermine the U.S.'s diplomatic message and their mission overseas. CNN reports that diplomats feel betrayed as they try to rally a message overseas that comes into great contradiction with what is happening right now. Obviously, the U.S. has always been at the forefront of pushing international values of democracy and free speech. This criticism from the diplomatic community comes in light of Trump's rhetoric, which has pushed for a crackdown on protests and a return to law and order. He has claimed that without order, there is no liberty. He has also told governors to seek retribution for violent acts in their states. This comes after the president made a surprise trip to the historic St. John's Church near the White House. Now, in theory, a trip to a church during hard times would not be surprising, and it's probably a unifying measure. But it's been reported that law enforcement officials used very heavy-handed tactics to clear peaceful protesters before Trump was able to visit the church and then pose with a Bible and with several White House staff members. This action was criticized by both Democrats and even some Republicans. And since then, Trump has also threatened to enact the Insurrection Act. Now, to remind people, this is an act that empowers the president of the U.S. to deploy U.S. military and federalized National Guard troops within the United States, in particular circumstances, mainly to suppress civil disorder, insurrection, and rebellion. Now, there is an ongoing debate over whether the president can use this act without specific support from the governor of whatever state that is in discussion. But either way, it would be a horrible message to many Americans, and it would be a very controversial reason to utilize this act when we're talking about racial injustice. Now, I think the reason why Trump's actions are quite dangerous and, in all honesty, quite unpresidential is because he is supporting systematic violence and a crackdown on human rights when this is the exact reason as to why people are protesting and enraged. Now, look, I'm not at all surprised that diplomats feel like they are stuck between a rock and a hard place due to what's happening in the U.S. right now. Currently, Mike Pompeo is meeting with survivors of the Tiananmen Square massacre which was when the Chinese government had a brutal crackdown on human rights during these pro-democracy protests. June 4th, which is today, marks the end of these riots in China in 1989. And this is only days after law enforcement violently dispersed peaceful protesters outside St. John's Church in Washington, D.C. How can the United States push for democracy and freedom of speech when the president seems to be more concerned about law and order rather than a discussion about a flawed system. Now, coming back to CNN's article, the former U.S. ambassador to Bulgaria, Nancy McElderney, noted that under any other circumstances, now in quotes, it would of course be wonderful for the Secretary of State to meet with the survivors of the Tiananmen Square massacre, because that's what the U.S. stands for. She continues, We supported those protesters then. We supported the protesters in the Maidan in Ukraine and in Tehran and in Hong Kong. But how can we do so now? End quotes. 
Now, Mick Eldeny's sentiments here expresses a kind of blunt and brutal reality, and it's really unfortunate. The killing of George Floyd, which has brought global solidarity and movements around the world, should be something that everyone looks internally and looks at the system for. But sadly, now countries like China, and then Carrie Lam in Hong Kong, are using the U.S.'s response to accuse the U.S. of having a double standard. That could be a huge hit for some of our soft power around the world, and it could also be perfect propaganda for China in places like Hong Kong if they choose to get more physical and put down order in the Hong Kong protests. Foreign Policy has an amazing article talking about how these protests have caused a storm of chaos inside of Chinese media. Because usually, let's be honest, usually Chinese state media is very critical of the U.S.'s pro-democracy stance, especially in Asia, and even more specifically in Hong Kong. But this is interesting because supporters of the Communist Party and then of Xi Jinping have been quick to support what Trump and law enforcement have been doing. Now, I'm not saying that all law enforcement has been bad. But the Chinese media have used it as justification now for quelling the protests in Hong Kong. And this is problematic because then they've also been claiming that basically whatever the U.S. says internationally involving human rights doesn't really matter because we have a double standard. So it's a serious issue, and I don't like the fact that Chinese media is now supporting Trump's action against these protesters. It would be the same as if Putin was congratulating a president on how they could conduct democratic election. Basically, this just isn't good. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the world has obviously been watching. And we have also seen criticism from almost every corner of the globe, from democracies and authoritarian countries alike. The French paper Le Monde said that, in quotes, in avoiding any expression of empathy for the victims of the injustice, and in refraining from speaking about the root of the problem, Trump has remained faithful to the tactic he's used since his rise to power, division and confrontation, end quotes. Even India's second biggest English language daily, which is called the Hindu, said, in quotes, imagine if it was a non-Western president who called the protesters thugs, threatened to shoot them, and used the country's military against them, and posed for a photo in front of a worshipping place, holding a religious text, after clearing the peaceful protesters using force, end quotes. There were also criticisms from Pakistan, Germany, and Mexico. My concern here is that this may be the largest message that Trump has ever sent to the world. He has finally truly given the green light to authoritarians around the world. The message is clear. He is saying that we are doing exactly what you are doing, and I'm completely fine with it. Of course China and Pakistan and India are taking note. The U.S. has always stood up for protests against injustice and anti-democratic norms. Now we aren't. Now, on a positive note, there are people speaking out, which is always good news. I was quite happy to see that General James Mattis finally broke his silence yesterday. This is pretty big news, because for years, Mattis has tried to stay out of the political arena. Aside from stepping down from the administration after Trump pulled forces out of Syria, Mattis has remained above the political chaos. He believes it's his role to do so. But this changed yesterday. And when someone like Mattis finally speaks, this is important, and Americans should listen. Mattis wrote that, quotes, Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people. He does not even pretend to try. We are witnessing the consequences of three years of this deliberate effort. End quotes. And now, I'm glad to see Mattis speak out. I've always considered him to be the philosopher general, and he has a way of words that I hope people will take to heart. But the party that I'm registered to has stopped listening to people like Mattis. They've stopped listening to the world leaders that have supported us and worked with us since 9-11. They've stopped listening to diplomats in our international community. And they've stopped listening to criticism, which could be the most important of all. They've decided to follow a man who every day seems less and less fit to be even a semi-decent person during a time when we don't even need greatness. We just need some form of unity. The world is watching us during a very dark time. 
And I'm just worried that it will be very hard to rebuild and come together with the flames that are burning. If we want to acknowledge the problems, we need to find a common bond. And if we can't even find a common bond amongst our leadership, how can we go around the world enforcing a bond that seems to be broken? And with that, I'm going to leave it. But thank you for listening, and we will be back later this week with one of our long-form episodes. And as usual, you can find us on YouTube, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and some of those weird third-party sites. Please let us know what you think. Do you have any recommendations of guests that we should have? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Please let us know. Have a great day. Thank you.